Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us here today at our second issue briefing here at the World Economic Forum annual meeting 2015. Thank you also to our audience who are watching live online. Very excited to be here uh, for this issue briefing. Let me just explain the concepts behind this. It's, a, it's an innovation for this year's meeting. It's not a press conference. It's not an announcement. It's purely uh, an exercise in getting some of the finest brains and some, on, on some of the most interesting and insightful and pressing topics out of the luxurious Congress Centre down into the bowels of the basement to answer questions on particular pressing and serious issues. This uh, session, and I'm delighted to be joined by Axel Lehman, a member of, and group of the Group Executive Committee and the Group Chief Risk Officer of Zurich Insurance. Of course, Lehman is here because last week um, Zurich and uh, the World Economic Forum collaborated to launch the Global Risks 2015 report. You will have seen the headlines. Interstate conflict was the number one risk in terms of livelihood, and water crisis was rated the number one risk in terms of potential impact. I'm going to ask Axel to uh, give, make some brief remarks on the, the key findings and key learnings of this report, and we'll then open for questions. Okay, thank, thank you, Oliver. Pleased to be here. So, you know, when I look back a little bit, this is the 10th edition of the Global Risk uh, re re Report, and there are some some shifts we interviewed, we worked together with 900 experts out of the World Economic Network that we have. And um, I think it's uh, somewhat different than what we have seen in the last couple of years. The first difference is, you know, I think there's somewhat the recognition that the world and the risk landscape is more fragile, more, um, mm. you know, fragmented. Uh, it's all full of surprises. Uh, discontinuity, volatility is some key themes. And that is underpinned, you know, through dramatic shifts and changes in terms of the societal demands, the economic uh, uh, environment, and also geopolitical uh, friction. I think that is the common, mm -hmm. that is the common uh, theme. When you basically look also how the perception of risk has shifted, when I look back to the years 2007 to 2014, basically economic risk were prevailing. So in particular, it was asset bubble, it's the question of financial stability, it's income inequality, it's systemic uh, risk. That has really shifted. In this year's report, I think clearly, you know, societal, geopolitical risk are really getting absolutely at the forefront. And interestingly enough, when we did the analyze, you know, societal issues seem to be like the spider in the net. So that, that is some of the big unknown uh, it is influencing and it gets influenced by basically every uh, risk type. We did then some uh, deeper dives and uh, this year we wanted to highlight three different eras. One is certainly you know, the whole question of uh, urbanization, which is a, a clear example of huge opportunities that are out, but uh, you know, uh, implemented or conducted in, a, in an unplanned way could have also significant risk. Then the secondly is the increasing influence of you know uh, politics on the economics uh, and uh, and economical uh, mm -hmm. be behavior of individual companies, and then the third one is more about you know technology and emerging uh, risk. So I think it's a great set of uh, of key risks that we wanted to highlight, and again, it's I think it's like a discussion platform that we want to establish as the global risk report. Thank you very much, um, Axel. I just uh, a question before we we throw open to the, to the audience. Economic risks, uh, as you mentioned, over time have been evolving, have been, uh, have been seemingly overtaken by other risks, as you mentioned. Now, how, do you, how do you account for that? Is it a fact that the world is addressing successfully the economic risks, or are they being drowned out by, by more pressing concerns? I s you know, I think they are still obviously uh, on top of everybody's uh, mind. We will have to, we saw last week, you know, the Swiss National Bank action. We will have tomorrow the press uh, conference of uh, Mario Draghi. So when I look also to the overall ranking, I think, uh, you know, the analyze would say on the shorter term, the next uh, 12, 18 months, you know, people still perceive economic risk as to be absolutely at the forefront. When you look a little bit to the long time horizon, you know, 10 years out, there are clearly more the societal, economic, environmental uh, risk. That doesn't mean the economic risk are smaller, but it means in terms of, you know, impact and what people really start to worry about, that starts to shift. One of the questions we received on social media this morning when we first mentioned this, this, this session was focusing on a risk which is, was not at the top of our report last, um, this last week, nevertheless very topical in the news right now, cybercrime. 
um, it's it barely days goes by with uh, without it being in the in the newspapers. What kind of what's what's your prognosis for for for, for this risk? You know, cyber is obviously clearly also in this year's report we enlarged it and looked more also to other you know technological uh, risk. Cyber is a clear key theme. It's also a clear t- key theme here at the annual mm-hmm. gathering uh, in, in, in Davos. So what you see on one hand, it's somewhat encouraging progress, so to speak. You know, I think most companies are getting clearly aware of cyber risk and they do quote unquote their homework. But I think more and more we all recognize that this is definitely not enough. Cyber risk is a clearly interconnected risk. The more companies, for example, outsource or offshore or have suppliers, uh, have interconnected value change, that can be hugely disruptive from a cyber risk uh, perspective. So what we see on one hand from a technical perspective, relatively good progress, but from an overarching governance uh, I think there's a clear, you know, huge gaps to be closed. And basically, they only can be addressed through kind of public-private partnerships and uh, mm-hmm. intense dialogue. And the other key um, area of risk that we, we, we uncovered um, via our audience was, was urbanization, obviously such a, such a vast mega trend, more people moving to cities than ever before. And whilst this, uh, this poses opportunities in terms of economics and, uh, and, and, and demographically in general, um, as you mentioned in the report, it poses risks too. Can you give us more of a, you know, some insights into what kind of risks um, urbanization entails and, and, and possibly how they could be addressed? Sure. Let me just give you a number. You know, 1950, so some 50, 60 years ago, one third of the world population was living in cities. In 10 years from here, two thirds of the world population will live in cities. 80% of the gross national products are produced in cities. That has obviously huge opportunities, but, you know, give me a couple, uh, let me, you know, but there are also really some, you know, un- underlying risk associated. So, for example, the whole, you know, question of the infrastructure, mm. huge investments are needed, 70 trillion until the year 2030. Only in Africa, more than 80 billion are needed until the year, per, per annum until 2020, only half is funded. So where is this money getting from? There are environmental risks. You know, we know that 15 out of the 20 mega cities are all built along coastal areas. They are all, you know, in the so-called fire of belt. So huge exposures to natural catastrophes. That's another one. Societal risk, you know, people coming from rural era into the cities, younger people looking uh, for jobs, looking for cheaper housing. When this is not available, that could be a real melting pot from a societal perspective. So it's a whole range of, you know, key risks that when they are addressed in the proactive way, we and the society can deal with it. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, slums, already today 40% of the people in cities live in slums, will prevail. Thank you. Just see if there's any questions from the floor. Nobody putting their hand up yet. So uh, forgive me for asking another one from our archive, from our social media audience this morning. Now, look, this is a multi-stakeholder um, endeavor addressing risk, as, as, as we all know. Can you give us some insight into what areas you see most progress in? Where, where, where you think um, yeah, the public-private you know, cooperation is actually having an impact? Um, You know, maybe let me quote two or three one. I think actually uh, on cyber, I think, you know, increasing awareness that there must be a kind of a dialogue and interaction. It already has happened on the more technological basis. I'm somewhat confident, also it's still a steep hill to climb, uh, uh, that this will also happen more on the uh, on the political on the overall political side. I see very good cooperation taking place, uh, for example, in terms of flood and flood resilience. Uh, we, for example, have a joint venture with the IFRC, the International Federation of the Risk Cross and Risk Resendants, where you know private companies work together with public offices uh, in emerging markets uh, to help communities to deal with uh, with flood risk. So these are good good examples. Excellent, excellent. And finally, this is a, a you know the, the premier convening platform for leaders uh, from across all stakeholder groups. What are you doing um, at the annual meeting this year, and or how are you how are you participating that you hope will drive the the risk and the risk mitigation agenda forwards? Look, on one hand, I'm very very pleased to see that the global risk report is also really actively shaping the agenda of the Davos gathering. There are a lot of uh, discussions also in private session around key risks that have been also that are discussed in the overall global risk uh, report. 
You know, when it comes to global risk, there are no easy solutions. So to have platforms of a dialogue and interaction, and in particular bringing various stakeholders together, I think it's an, it's an excellent opportunity here. And I'm very confident that in relevant eras that will be carried forward also into 2016. Excellent, Eamon. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you all for joining us here. And uh, looking forward to uh, being joined uh, by our audience uh, live online for our next issue briefing later today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Oliver.